Hi guys, and Laura Vitali. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, we're gonna do our first pumpkin recipe of the season. Now, today what I wanna show you is how to make a really delicious, easy, and absolutely show-stopping for a family party, say you're having like a Thanksgiving or a fall dinner party. It's my pumpkin and ginger trifle. You're gonna love it. Let's get started by making the pumpkin bread first, which I've made its own recipe, a standard recipe on my pumpkin bread years ago, and it's still the same recipe I use today. It's just the best. So let me run you through the list of ingredients, which is really short and sweet. You'll need some granulated sugar, you'll need flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, and pumpkin pie spice, eggs, pure pumpkin puree, vegetable oil, or light olive oil, which is what I like to use, and some vanilla extract. I've got my oven preheated to 350. I've got a nine by five inch loaf pan ready and lined with parchment paper. And we're gonna go ahead and make the actual loaf. This is gonna be the sponge for the trifle. It's so good, you're gonna love it. And if you don't wanna make a trifle, by all means, just make the loaf. I have it on hand because it's gonna be delicious with a cup of coffee in the afternoon. All right, let's get started. It could not be easier. It's gonna take a whisk and a spatula. To this bowl with my sugar. I'm going to add the eggs. I'm pretty much going to add all of my wet, wet ingredients. The pumpkin puree. The pumpkin puree makes this really yummy and moist and delicious. And also, so does the oil. But if you don't want to use oil, you want to use melted butter, by all means. You do you. But it's going to be just a little bit denser. Still delicious, but a little more dense. The oil. Like I said, I'm using a light olive oil because it's flavorless. It's better for you. And that's just what I like and a splash of really good vanilla. And now just use a whisk to just mix everything together and combine until it's, well, until everything is well combined. Now that we have that done, I'm just gonna quickly mix together all of my dry ingredients, add them all to my bowl, and I'm just gonna switch to a spatula just to fold them all in, and that is it. It's so easy and simple, no machine required, and it makes for the best pumpkin loaf ever. I love this recipe, and it's just, it's just simple, because all the ingredients you probably already have on hand. It brings that fall aroma into your kitchen the second it hits the oven. All right, that looks great. I'm gonna pour this into my prepared pan. And this is just gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes or until it's completely cooked through. And then we're gonna let it cool before we move on. My pumpkin bread was in the oven for an hour. It took an hour for it to fully cook through and then I let it cool completely and just sliced it into thick slices. It smells divine. To make the custard and everything, what is this? <laughs> to make um, the custard and everything else that we need for the recipe, we're gonna take some shortcuts, but they're all the right ones. Starting off with some instant vanilla pudding. Now you can make your very own vanilla pudding. If you follow me, you know that I've got a great recipe for homemade vanilla pudding. Uh, but this is just a great way to simplify things a little bit. Since we are making the bread, I wanted to take a little shortcut. So I'm using some vanilla pudding. I need some whole milk to go with that. I also need some pumpkin puree, pumpkin pie spice, juice of an orange, some ginger snaps, and some heavy cream. That's it. Everything together is like heaven. It's so good, you're gonna love it. I'm gonna start off by whipping my heavy cream to stiff peaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Move my bread out of the way. I'm gonna just whip this up to stiff peaks and then I'll show you, well, show you the rest. Whipped cream is good to go and done. And now we're gonna work on the vanilla pudding, which is just your instant vanilla pudding mix. And you need your milk. She needs some milk. <laughs> I couldn't help that. <laughs> she needs some milk. All right, I'm just gonna whip this to mix and I'm gonna let it sit aside for a couple minutes. All right, the pudding has thickened. Now we just kind of fold the whipped cream into here. You wanna mix the whipped cream with all of the pudding and then you're gonna divide the pudding mixture into two. I'll show you. Once I get there. So just mix it all in. You're making a really light, almost like a vanilla mousse, if you will, because the mixture is just so light because the whipped cream is so thick. Now the vanilla pudding is so thick and the whipped cream kind of lightens it up a bit. Okay, 
lovely, lovely, lovely. It does not have to be 1,000% perfect because nobody cares. And now I'm going to take half of this, pour it back into there. Okay, I'll just take, oh, it's so gorgeous. I don't know why, but I'm mesmerized by it. Add a little bit more in there. And then I'm going to take the pumpkin and the pumpkin pie spice, and I'm going to whisk it into this half. And now we have a pumpkin mousse-like filling, and then we've got a vanilla filling. And then just mix it all in like so. All right, so now we're ready to rumble. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm adding my pound cake, my pumpkin cake, bread, whatever you want to call it, to the very bottom. I want a nice, even layer. I just need to taste this. Man, that's good. So good. Okay. Then, you take a squeeze of orange. I know this is going to sound so strange, but you got to trust your girl. I know a thing or two about a thing or two. Then you take about half of the pumpkin mixture. I mean, it's you're making a trifle, so it's not difficult. It's actually one of the easiest desserts you could make for a big crowd because it's so simple. And you just tailor it to your dish, you know? And then you, this is when the ginger bread cookies come in, ginger snaps. And then you just make a nice even layer of ginger snaps. And what happens to the ginger snaps is it kind of reacts the same as the cake. It gets all soggy and drinks up. Doesn't matter if they're upside down because you won't see them. And they drink up that custard and it's just so delicious. And you just keep doing that. And then we're going to do, now we're going to go in with a layer of the vanilla cake. I'm just going to use the same ladle. It just, it seems like it's a lot back and forth, but it's so easy. You can certainly do this. So you can see down here, we've got, you know, our cake, uh, the pumpkin, cookie, vanilla, cake, pumpkin, cookie. Now with this cookie layer, make sure you're overlapping because you're not going to get any more cake or cookie layer after this one. We just have to top it with our vanilla. So I just want to make sure that this whole thing is covered nicely. And I also did squeeze some more orange on the second cake. You can make more layers if you want to, if you just cut the cake slight, like, you know, thinner, and then you just make more layers. But I just feel like I'm not that patient. I'm really not. So if I can get away with just doing that, then that's what I'm going to do. And go ahead and finish it all off. You can see I'm really making sure that the whole thing is covered nicely with my cookies. And then you just top it off with your vanilla. And then this is going to go into the refrigerator. Um, really, ideally, overnight is best, uh, four to six hours minimum. But I'm going to probably pop this in overnight. We'll see how I fancy. And then I will show you what it looks like when it's done. And we'll go ahead and give it a taste. I'm sitting over here with my green juice because I'm reminding myself that life is about balance. So I've got my green juice in one hand and my trifle in the other. Life is good. All right, I'm just going to pop this into the fridge, snack on the leftover custard, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're ready to serve it. My trifle was in the fridge for about four hours. Now, I'm serving this for dinner tomorrow, so I don't want to kind of scoop into it and all that, but I'm going to share with you, I'm going to have a taste of it right now because I, if I don't do that right now with you, I'm going to sneak into the fridge and do it anyway because I can't wait until tomorrow. <laughs> Otherwise, you know me, I just wait to show you the next day, but I can't help myself. I want it so bad, so I'm going to go into it. And yes, I did change my shirt, but that's another story. Now, for the top, you don't have to do anything to the top, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of these gingerbread cookies, the ginger snaps, I should say, and I'm going to grate them on top just for texture and just because visually it's kind of pretty. Just take a zester or a grater and just go ahead and do that all over the top if you fancy. If not, then just skip it. I'm just going to go back here. I'm going to try. Oh, ho, ho. I got it all. I got the cake, the pumpkin, the vanilla, the cookie. Got it all. Mmm. 
อืมว่าน่าจะมันนี่มีก็ So good and delicious, not too sweet, which I prefer. Perfect on every single level, and it's not too heavily spiced either, which I do think is important because sometimes with a pumpkin spice or ginger, like everything together, just seems to be really strong. Mm -mm. Not here. That is perfect. I'm gonna move the spoon away because, like I said, I am serving this for dinner, so I don't want to mess it up, mess it up too much. But look at this. It was like the perfect bite from right back here. And I'm just gonna turn it around. No one's the wiser. You see nothing. You know nothing. Laura in the kitchen.com has got you covered with the recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. I'm gonna go cover this up. Then I'll see you next time. Bye.